Let's say that you already generate OAS API definitions from your source code. So maybe you've got something massive like this, and this is the standard pet store example. How does that work with Tyke? How can you easily get going? It's very straightforward. This is VS Code with the REST plugin installed, and it's as simple as this. That's imported that definition we just looked at, and that's it servicing a response. Now that's pretty great, but let's have a look at what that really means in terms of what Tyke's done. So if we just refresh the screen, you'll be able to see it's created this Swagger Pet Store API. And you can see that every endpoint that's been previously defined in that definition has been created. But more than that, you can see these little ones. Because we had that validation flag set on the import command, what it's done is it's spotted any schema validation in place, and it's automatically created these validation middleware points so that Tyke actually does the validation for you. And that's pretty cool. Now let's look at the API definition. So we've got this great big file it's now got the extra type fields added to it. You've got a single source of truth that you can store in your source repository. Fantastic. You'd get hold of that by exporting the API definition. However, if you just export the OAS part, we'll strip out the type configuration fields, and that means you can use it for things like developer portals. So let's have a look at what that looks like. So that's the spec we just put in. You can see that it's all beautifully been rendered because it's OAS, which this editor already understands. But one of the clever things is part of the import, Tyke has actually changed the address that the developers call to be the Tyke gateway rather than the upstream. And then the, the original upstream has now been pushed up so that Tyke will forge your request onto that. Now that is pretty cool.